remember, uh, males and males and females in the embryo stages, and then even in the like younger stages, um, they all start out the same, right? Um, but the female develops differently from the male. So remember, the male also has a falciform ligament here that helps hold up the liver, attaches the liver to the um, body wall. Right? Everyone remember that from digestive respiratory? But the falciform ligament here is um, typically much larger in mature females. If you were to look at a juvenile female, the falciform ligament would be about the same size. But in mature females, it's larger, and you have this um, opening here uh, that forms. Uh, that opening is actually for eggs to go in. So the eggs will rupture from the ovaries. So the ovaries have the same position as the testes in the male. So we've got ovaries on both sides here, like at the anterior of the um, abdominal cavity here. So I've got the ovaries. You can see these large eggs that are developing. There, obviously there's more eggs, but these are the ones that are maturing, right? Um, so the eggs actually rupture out of the ovary here, float through the body cavity here, and go into this ostium tube. It's hard to imagine how that happens, but it actually happens. It ha it's actually similar in mammals, except there's a much shorter distance to travel, and there's a similar tissue, like the falciform ligament, kind of um, surrounding uh, the ovary, so that the, the egg is taken up into it. But um, but this is it's a, actually a very similar system. So the egg ruptures out of the ovary, um, goes into the ostium tube here, this opening in the falciform ligament, passes through this oviduct here, you can see this tube. The oviduct goes behind the ovary here. There's also a shell or nidamental gland here um, at the bottom of the ovary, and it's a little bit easier to see on this side. So this is actually just like the bottom part of the ovary, but this expanded part here that looks like it's just an expanded part of the oviduct here is the shell or nidamental gland, okay? Um, it's called the shell, commonly called the shell gland because it helps produce the encasing around the embryo, okay? Does that make sense? Like a shell. So like in, um, vertebrates that actually produce a shell, the shell gland produces the actual shell um, type tissues, okay? Um, all right, so then the egg passes down through the oviduct here, and then it gets into the expanded um, uterus here. So just think of the oviduct as a much wider um, Sorry, the, the uterus has a much wider oviduct. And the mesentery is kind of been torn on this side, but the mesentery here that attaches to the oviduct and the uterus is um, called the mesotubarium. So just think of this as one long tube carrying um, the fertilized egg or embryo, and then you know fetus is developing here. Um, when we look at the mammals, we'll notice that uh, the um, corresponding mesentery is actually divided up into several different sections, whereas in the shark it's just one big mesotubarium. Okay, um, and then remember when the um, uh, sharks are, the little baby sharks are born, they exit through the cloaca here, right? Um, and remember the, um, uh, the papilla there just has a urinary function and the space that the uterus empties into, so if you stick like a probe up that goes into the uterus, that space there is the erodium, and the caprodium is the space where the um, fecal tissue exits from the digestive system, okay? So like the space around the urinary papilla. Okay, so that's the reproductive side of the urogenital system in the female. So now let's look at the urinary part. So the urinary part differs quite a bit in uh, males and females. So the top third of the um, kidney in females is basically like vestigial. They don't really use it. Um, it's been modified to become the Leydig's eggs gland in males, remember, that helps produce the seminal fluid. So just the bottom two thirds here is actually functional kidney. 
So you can actually see, you know, all of this kidney tissue. That's how it would appear in the male if the ductus deferens and the seminal vesicle weren't sitting on top of the kidney. So when you look at the female, it's just the kidney tissue that you're seeing. There's no other, you know, reproductive stuff. Okay. Um, also, a major difference, and again, it's really hard to see the duct, but the duct that runs along the length of the kidney and then exits through the urinary papilla in the cloaca is called the arconephric duct in the females. That duct in the males is an accessory urinary duct, so there are two different ducts. Both males and females in the embryo start out having an arconephric duct, but then as the male starts developing, um, different uh, reproductive structures that run on top of the kidney. Um, the arconephric duct is used for, um, develops into um, the ductus deferens. So an accessory urinary duct had to form to, um, to drain the kidney. Okay, so that's why they have two different ducts. Even though they look exactly the same, they actually have different developmental origins. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so the accessory urinary duct is unique to the males and the arconephric duct um, is what the female still has and retains that from the embryonic form, okay? All right, so for just identifying stuff, um, this is the kidney in the female. The duct that drains it is the arconephric duct and that drains into the urinary, um, urinary papilla down here, all right? Um, Let's see what else. Also, right, it's not just a one-way track, right? The oviduct's not a one-way track. I, I described it as like the egg being fertilized and then going down this way, right? But the sperm, right, goes from the clasper of the male, right, exits the urogenital papilla, and if it was a male, right, runs along that groove of the um, clasper, and then the male inserts the clasper into the female cloaca here through the urodium, and then that would travel up the uterus here, um, left or right side or both, right, and up through the oviduct here, um, and it fertilized the egg there. Okay. What about top section of the kidney? Top section of the kidney here. What is it called? Is it? It doesn't have a name. It's just it's just like non-functional tissue. So the it male doesn't. Does have a name. Yeah, for the male, it's the Leydig's gland, the top third. Yep. All right. So, um, so that's all for the female. So you guys can cut through and look at the mesentery of the ovary is the mesovarium. In a, a male, it's the mesorchium. So it's a little bit easier to remember in the female, right? Because it sounds like a mes mesovarium. Okay.